because sometimes it works weird on the full set of accounts. Mm. All right, now it's saying you're live. Can you see me? There you go. So oh, we're going to get feedback. Right? Um, I want to quickly just test out if you can hear me when I speak in the other room. OK. So that I don't want everybody connecting with their mics open. It's really crazy. <laughs> yeah. Anybody watching this in the future, uh, you're welcome. I know how exciting this is. I didn't hear you at all. Okay, we're good now. Oh, we can send that link out. What's this thing about live? Like, there you go. Like, why is there? Uh, we seem to be like. It's be very delayed. Delay. Oh, it's that. It's super delayed. Yeah, I think that's it. Oh, that's good to know. So, like, I might get a question about something I said like a while ago. Or something. Probably. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, okay, we've got the Hangout. It's working for you, so we can send it out to them? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Into it. I'm yeah, sure. you're having errors, huh? <laughs> What's up? <laughs> Just you guys saying Mike and I are getting personal lecture. But now I'm out of the room, so I don't know what I don't know what they can do. <laughs> Zero viewers right now. Okay. This seems reasonable. How do I know when anybody gets here? Well, I know. I don't know. I'll connect and see what I have to use. So you're here now? I'm here. Was that? Do you just like it or something? <laughs> um, I wish it would show yeah, you. Yeah, well, maybe if I click viewers, it'll. Decided to change. No. Um. Everybody can hear us, so that's good. Maybe, maybe if I go to the chat. Um, hopefully, you guys can hear me. I'm opening the chat. Yeah, they they, they can. At least if some you can. are here. Please. I think I'm going to instruct them to. Chat. Our question is during the lecture. I'm going to instruct them to use the uh, Slack. And I'll just monitor Slack for questions and let you know. Yeah. Oh, cool. It says four viewers all of a sudden. Maybe it just has a weird it's probably lag. Still really low and it's slow in updating, I guess. Yeah. Um, let me send out a quick email with this link. Just in case that's the only, that's the only thing people are checking. Um, Hello commands. Go to mute on mute. Oh, interesting. Users. The only member of the video call. Wow. I guess that kind of didn't work. But it says people are here. So welcome to your lecture. Anybody out there? We're broadcasting from uh, Apollo what 19? What are they on now? <laughs> Just waiting for everybody to get here. So I'm not sure how I will know. I think Scott's working on that. Oops, 
<laughs> okay, people say they can hear me. That's great. Oh, is is Martin trying to join the? I guess I guess the seniors could come too if they really yeah, want. Yeah, you can just post the link in there. Okay. Say we'll start at two forty-five. Sure. Yeah. If anybody can hear that, we're starting at two forty-five. All of this is just um, just extra. Extra entertainment. Yeah, just entertainment. You can hear me type. <laughs> so entertainment or an extra headache. Campus. It's amazing how Google just solves it. Yeah, the video call has a different link. On the one on the calendar. I didn't even realize there was a link on the calendar. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Twelve viewers. It's pretty, uh, this is getting hot. This is more viewers than I've ever had <laughs> on YouTube. I feel like we're um, announcers at a game or something. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting in our booth. <laughs> Uh, this should be. Being, this is also probably being re recorded as well. Yeah, because this is like how we normally run them in the classroom. It's yeah, like we don't this have any viewers. Yeah, recorded. <laughs> and take the video. Mark your paper moments. Thanks, Hugo. <laughs> so we can watch it at a later date. Yes. You should probably make a little marker somewhere in there being like you can fast forward to the yeah. spot in the video. <laughs> Unless you just want to hear Scott not me <laughs> ramble for a while. For quality assurance. <laughs> I wonder if that's I wonder I wonder how big the delay is. Like do you know if it's like uh, seconds or because I feel like I was hearing something like that I said like a minute ago. On your on your I laptop. honestly don't know. At least like all of them will be yeah. all hopefully close to the same time. Yeah. Click something on we just your, lost a viewer. We have thirteen now though. But. Click something on your computer. Alright, I got that pretty quick. Okay. I'll open a new tab real quick. We'll see what that is. Wow. Uh, so that wasn't quick. <laughs> yeah. This is interesting. Yeah, this is taking quite a while. Wait, you didn't, you still haven't gotten the star either. Oh, I changed that to a star. But it's probably in sync though, right? The audio and the, wow. the video. Now I got the star. Yeah, so this is like a minute delay. If anyone else out there, did you just get a star and a new tab open? Did anybody just see that? There is definitely a delay. <laughs> yeah. With hopefully not with the audio though. I bet it's synced up. The recording should be fine. Right. The live stream, I don't know how great it's gonna be. Okay. So um, for everybody out there right now, um, if the lecture itself is just very choppy, um, I advise you at least try to keep watching it live, but um, the recording after this should be very like synced and it should be in real time. Like there won't be like delays and stuff. Um, if you guys ask questions, um, it might take a while to 
answer them just depending upon what we're doing here and when you guys actually get to that content at home, um, if it's delayed. So this six change, should I keep waiting for more people to make it to the room? To hang up? Or just keep going? It's gonna be on a recording. Yeah, and so we can send so, that to you. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. Well, for everybody here, let's get started then. Yeah, if you have a question, Slack it to Scott, um, or just in the channel. Scott will let me know about it, and then we'll take it from there. So regex. Regex. Regex is a way of specifying a pattern of a string. And you're going to use it anytime you have a string, anytime you want to test or find or replace a pattern within a string. And interestingly, it's kind of like a sublanguage within JavaScript. Syntax, as you can probably see up here, we're using this regexer site. And it's got this special syntax for matching strings. That's really what we're going to be going over. That's really what regex is about. But we should also understand what it can and can't do for us. So what it can do and what it's great at doing is finding patterns in strings that are characters and things like that. What it can't do are loops and recursion. We can get more to that later. But for example, it can't do a general palindrome. You can't match palindromes with just regex. You would need a for loop um, or some other kind of looping. So we're we're teaching regex, I would say mainly because we can and because this Hangout thing is fun, um, but also because it's, it can be really nice when you have some string manipulation problems, which sometimes come up in interviews, um, and sometimes just come up randomly when you're coding. It's a pretty powerful tool if you know how to use it. And I should also say that we are going to go over a bunch of things, but don't stress too much about the specifics. So don't stress about memorizing all of the syntax of regex. There's plenty of ways of discovering that. And in fact, I would bet that all of you are capable of learning regex perfectly well by yourself with just Google. Um, but what this will help you do, hopefully, is just give you a spattering of everything so you can get a sense of what regex can do. Uh, and then we're going to have a workshop afterwards that you can test out, because that's really the only way you're going to learn it. Uh, Zeke actually looks at, when he needs a regex, he just Googles the thing he's trying to find, like uh, regex for matching phone numbers or regex for matching emails. So that can be just as useful, um, just knowing how to find the right regex instead of being able to build your own. So to that end, Google, Stack Overflow, this site regexer that I'm using, um, notice that there's no final E, it's just reg EXR. Um, and some other ones, there's regex 101. Uh, and the workshop we're going to be doing is actually an online tutorial called regex 1. So let's dive into it, though. So regex has the special syntax. And if we just get rid of all of it, and you just have things like A in there, it'll match the A character. If you have A, B. It'll look for any places where A and B are next to each other in that order. If we have B, A, different order. Looks like it doesn't show up. Oh, there we go, bar. Great. Um, and notice the syntax with the forward slashes. There's also a G, which we'll get to later. But these forward slashes, that's specific to JavaScript. So this is JavaScript's way of denoting a regex. It's inside forward slashes. Um, cool. So let's talk about some of the characters. Let's talk about some of the special syntax we've got. I'm going to actually take a break now to make sure there aren't any pressing questions before I dive in, or problems people may have. Major problems. I guess I, I might have to wait like two minutes just to <laughs> just for it to get sent what to Mars and back or something. Yeah, we're, we're broadcasting from. What is this? 580 or something? To a lag is inescapable. Okay, I think he fixed it. Um, okay. Does everything seem relatively okay? Uh, let me just quickly ask any questions. Okay. Um,
So let's type. Okay. We need like elevator music. <laughs> yeah, we do. We need that. Um, we just need a list of jokes. I can tell while we wait. Good thing is Chuck said he basically has no delay. I'm very happy for you, Chuck. <laughs> Uh, besides that, I think everyone's good to go. So okay, continue. cool. Um, great. So we've got order matters here, and we can do things like a b question mark. And the question mark here is modifying the b. It's saying match a and possibly a b, but maybe not. Um, another thing we can do is we can say a plus. Do we have any? Let's do w plus. That should give us something. W plus says, modifies the W, in this case, saying match one or more Ws. If we go down here, we'll see we match a lot of single Ws. Down here, we match three of them. We can, if we choose to, make it a lazy one or more. So by definition, it's greedy, which is to say it matches as many Ws as it can in a row. But if we add a question mark, it might be hard to see, but we have three matches now where we had just the one. So these now individually match, because it's trying to match the minimum now. So it's matching one if it can, but if it can't, it will match two or three. Um, neat, so there's that. There's also a, b, star. a, b, star matches zero or more b's. So notice the difference between, let's see, do we have a double letter somewhere? Yes, okay. E, s. And if we do ES plus, we'll get ESS. If we do ES star, now we're saying zero or more S's, which means we will definitely match an E, followed by zero or more S's. Oh, that was a fun trick. Um, and that gives us all of these matches. Let's take, a, let's take a second to talk about the global flag, actually, which is interesting. Um, this is kind of the point in the lecture where I wish I could ask a question, and I could but only Scott could answer it. So I'll just take off the global flag, and we can see what it does. Interesting. It only matched the first one for us. Um, and that is the thing to remember about the global flag. So let's just put a capital E in there. We turn the global flag back on. Suddenly, we get all of the E's in the whole document, in the whole string. Um, so this. This G thing, normally you write this out yourself, right? When you're typing your JavaScript, you don't have this flags interface. You just type it out as, where do I have, do I have a note thing anywhere? Uh, I will bring one in. Bring this one in, sure. I can't see that one. I'll open up a terminal. And you have a hammer. So pretend we're writing JavaScript, right? We would actually be typing this as that. We would not be using some special interface. OK. Neat. So that's, that's the global flag. And we'll get to some more flags later. But let's, so, and we've gone over the question mark, the star plus. Let's talk about matching. a certain number of things, s. I know we have some s's in there. So this will match particularly two s's. Um, if we do two comma, it will match two or more. Probably won't show up unless we do something like w. And just to prove it will match two as well, I can stick this in here. I can also say two to four. And this will match these, but not that. Well. It matched up to this. I guess we could specify another condition in there, saying word boundaries. Let's talk about word boundaries then. So I'm hovering over this. This is one nice thing about regexer. If you hover over the pieces, it'll tell you what they do. A word boundary is what's called an anchor. Um, and it isn't matching so much a character as in between two characters. So a word boundary is when, a, when you have something that isn't a word followed by something that is a word, or something that is a word followed by something that isn't. So in this case, we have w, here, let's put dots around this. 
bot is not a word, character. W is a word character. So the, the, where the cursor is right now is a word boundary, right? It's sort of in between these two characters, but it's not either of them. Um, same with this. There's a word boundary there. So these anchors are pretty neat. They're kind of a nice tool when you want to not match the thing before the word, right? I could say, oh, I want a non-word followed by two to four Ws. Thought, ooh, the W thing is really weird. Let's do Xs just to make it a little clearer. Uh, dash there or something. Show some other non-word characters. And this should not match. Okay, so this is saying non-word, and then x two to four times, and then non-word. But we've actually captured the dots in there. If we didn't want them, we could do it this way, like we were doing before. So it's kind of a nice, it's kind of a nice trick. Um, there's also non-word boundaries. That's a different type of anchor. Um, and you can see here, this is a non-word boundary, and then two to four x's. And this is a non-word boundary, and then two to four x's, and a non-word boundary. Um, the other anchors you've got are beginning and end. Let's scroll up to see beginning. Welcome. Or, well, we should just stick with that for now. Welcome. This is matching the beginning of the string, not the first character of the string, because it's an anchor, just the beginning of the string. Um, this matches the end of the string, which it, this doesn't match anything right now, because we're saying string begins, then we have welcome, then string ends. But in fact, after welcome, there's the whole rest of the string. Um, we could fix that with probably this. Oh, yeah, this. Don't worry too much about these. We'll go over them in a sec, but this is matching anything, any number of times, and then the end, finally. So here we go. We just matched the whole thing. Um, if I want to show you just the end by itself, though, we might talk about end in bar. There we go. We're just R. So again, this is not a character match. It's an anchor match. So we've gone over that, we've gone over counting. And I think it's important before we go on to the special groups that I've sort of alluded to, just to talk about this escape character. So this escape character is useful because regex has special syntax. And it's like, well, great, I can do w plus. Oh, let's do x plus again. I can do x plus, but what if I want to do, you know, question mark plus, or even plus plus, I want to match some number of pluses. Well, I need to escape the first plus. And now I can actually match the character plus instead of using the regex syntax that is plus. You can add some more pluses in here, and it will totally work. This escape character is saying, I need the literal version of the thing next to me. So one of the things you'll notice about regex is when you read it, you have to think, what does this modify? When we have this plus, it's modifying this whole thing. Oops. The, the right plus, let's do a right star even. The rightmost star is modifying all of that. And the escape character is modifying just the plus, saying literalize this. Have there been any questions yet? Nope. OK, I guess I just must be perfect. Um, some other, some other Good escape characters to know are new line. Um, we should probably match something in addition to it. There we go. New line is not an anchor. It's interesting that it doesn't show up unless you have it attached to something else. Let's just show it with E now, for example. So this is saying new line followed by capital E. Um, and then it shows us this whole line break and then E. Um, there are some other ones like tabs. There's an example of some tabs down here. Yeah. And there's also carriage return, which is something. I wonder if it follows. Oh, there are none in this case. 
You'll often have a character turn and new line are slightly different. I wouldn't worry too much about the difference unless you run into issues with it. Um, but the R denotes something normally used in Windows. In Windows, they had the separation between carriage returning and, and new lines. The carriage return would take the cursor. I can't. I'm trying to. I'm trying to give you guys a visual with my fingers. It's totally not working. The carriage return says, "Take me to the beginning, the leftmost column of the line," and the new line backslash n would say, "Go to the next line." Um, they've been mostly just co-opted into backslash n for new line now. They've been merged for the most part. So some special groups. We've looked at some special groups so far, but let's go over them explicitly. Let's take a sec. Let's take a sec to talk about another flag. The ignore case i flag. So this one's pretty simple, right? It's saying anything inside the regex, treat it as uppercase or lowercase matches. So uppercase and lowercase w will match here. Have an x, probably no uppercase x is anywhere. Oh, there we go. There's one in the alphabet they give you. Let's take off the ignore case flag, and then let's talk about word characters. Interesting. So word characters, let's talk about, I think this is actually the example they start you with when you come to regex. Oh, we can't get there yet. We need org first. But if you, the word character here, is saying anything that is a to z or zero to nine or underscore. Where is underscore? Let's write in an underscore here. Underscore also matches. If I get rid of this plus just to show you what a single word character will match. Now you see all these divisions between them. Great. The word plus was just saying match as many in a row as you can and match at least one. This should do a very similar thing except that we get infinite. Yeah, that's kind of a bummer. Word plus. Let's see, let's get any words that are only three. Ah, we need to put word boundaries around this. So the issue here, right, is it's not doing what I wanted it to do, which is to match only words of three characters, because any word of three or more characters will necessarily have three characters in it, and it will match just the piece of them. So if I want to say, no, I want word boundaries around these. Then we get just three word characters. So that's kind of fun. There's also non-word. This is a common pattern in regex. You will see word character is backslash lowercase w. Non-word character is uppercase w. And then we match all the things we weren't just matching a second ago. We can also do this plus, and we would see, OK, anytime we have them in a row, it merges them together, concatenates them. It's interesting to note and interesting to remember that word matches digits as well. You can see here. There's also a specific there's a specific group just for digits, which is D. Um, that will match just digits. This will match non-digits, including what some of these word-ish characters, you know, A to Z, the alphanumeric characters. Uh, there's also white space and non-white space. So notice the difference between non-white space and word, right? For the non-white space, we got all these other random characters in there, too. Um, I'll show you again. Oops, let me unhighlight it. There we go. We got all of those in there. And what I did before, when I wanted to match everything, was this. And that brings us right into or. So this, anything in square brackets denotes a single character or. So A, B, C. Oh, let's get rid of the plus for a second, just to make it a little clearer. This will match A or B or C. And we could say A or B or C followed by, I don't know, L. And then we get B, L there, A, L there. We can say followed by L and optionally E. And we will get B, L, E here and still just A, L there because the E is optional. If we want to make the whole LE optional, we have to put it in a group. Now we have A or B or C, and we've grouped LE, and it is optional. I suppose we also could have done this. But the issue there is that we will also match AE, if there are any. Are there any BEs? 
uh, it's not. Let's make one. BE. So we match BE, which is probably not what we wanted. We wanted to say only match LE. So there we go. That changes to semantics is what I was going for. So inside the square brackets, and remember this is a single character or, um, inside the square brackets there's even another specific syntax you can use. So you can do this to say not A or B or C. Uh, let's just follow it with an E. So these are all characters not A or B or C that are followed by an E. So we get welcome, me, great regex, and we don't get BE down here. Notice the um, double usage of caret, which is kind of a bummer, right? Caret can mean outside of square brackets, it means the beginning of the string. And inside square brackets, it means not, a negation of the or. We have another particular syntax in, uh, inside the square brackets, which is dash. We can do A through D, A through Z, C through G. This gives you a range to match. You can even do care. You can do digits as well. You maybe you just want to match zero through five. Oh, there will be none of those followed by an E. Um, we're matching zero through five. Notice we're not matching six. We can even say plus. Cool. Three plus me. Um, and we can also do something like this: A to sorry, zero to Z. And interestingly, we've kind of just recreated that. So that's kind of a neat trick, because what happens is 0 to 9 will actually wrap to A. And notice that we're matching A. So not A will come after 9 in a weird way in the range. Um, and we can do this through Z. And in fact, after uppercase Z, we can get lowercase A. This will not work in reverse. We can't do A through 9. It won't understand that. It's just a weird trick about regex. Um, so we have range, and if we want to specify a or slash, or rather dash or nine, we would have to do it this way. Because the dash is a special character inside of the square brackets. So that's single character oring. If you want a multi-character or, um, we want to match a, b, or l, e. This pipe is how you do it, which is a little bit like JavaScript, where you have or in JavaScript. Um, so this is saying match A, B together, both of them, or L, E. And you can see we are matching A, B, or L, E in all of these cases. Inside of these, we can have further rules. That's kind of a cool thing about regex, right? We can just keep nesting things. We can say E plus. And then Lee will match. In fact, Lee D, e, e, e will match. We could say optionally followed by a D, and that will match. We can say necessarily followed by a D. It will still match, but if we get rid of it, suddenly it's gone. So that's so that's for or. Have there been any questions? People are good. Delay yeah. test one two three delay. That was, that was funny. Ago. Capturing groups. So we've seen a bit about capturing groups so far. Um, this grouping syntax is used to make a group of things. Uh, by the way, you can't use it inside. This won't work. You can use it outside of the square brackets to say ABC question mark. Ooh, that's probably a bad one. Let's do ABC plus. And this will say this whole group plus. The plus is now modifying the entire group. So we could do a, B, C, A, B, C, and get it. Um, we might say A, B, C optionally followed by any amount of white space. Plus. And then here we could do this. And tap white space in there, and it will still match for us. Because this is matching A, B, C followed by any amount of white space over and over again. In fact, I think if we attach white space, it'll match that. Cool. Um, some other things about groups that are nice are that they actually end up being um, captured at the end of the regex. For this, I'm probably going to open up a REPL to show you guys. Make this 
there. Let's talk about the JavaScript syntax for using regex. Use, sure, let's use the same one. A, B, C, S, star, plus. You can do it globally. When you have a regex, you can call dot exec on the regex. You can exec it on a string. You can also invert the operation. And if you have a string, do string dot mash on the regex. Let's stick with exec for now to keep our regex at the beginning. Let's ex execute it on the string, I don't know, ABC, DF, ABC. Interesting. So notice that we get this kind of output. We get an array. This array also has some properties, index and input, which we can ignore mostly for now. Um, and we got this, ABC, ABC which was kind of interesting. So let's talk about that. Let's do two capturing groups to talk about that. So right now we only have one, um, but let's actually do A, B. We're gonna switch it up a bit and just have match wherever we get an A followed by a B, only now we've wrapped them in a capturing group. When we evaluate this, we'll see something a little different. We'll see that the whole match, A, B, we get, and we get an individual match for the first capturing group and a, an individual match for the second capturing group. We could put more inside of these. A, B, followed by, sure, C, D, and we will match A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. A, B, question mark, will optionally match the B. C, D, question mark, will optionally match the D. And then we can actually go in here, delete this C, this enter. This time we have A, C, D. The first capturing group just matches A, which is there is no B, so it doesn't match it. It was optional as well. And the second matches C, D, because the D was optional, but what but was indeed found. Um, yeah. That's a, that's a good one. This should also be test the regex. The test will just get you a true false. That's another method of a regex. It can get you true false on a string. If we took this out and we just had a bunch of X's, this regex won't match, we should get false, which we do. If we go back to exec, we should see either null or an empty string. Null. Okay. Cool. So coming back to here, that's what capturing groups do for you. Um, the language will, the language we're using, in this case JavaScript, will provide you the capturing groups when you go to match. You can specify specifically to not capture with question mark colon as the first two characters in the group. So this will say, this group, yeah, great, actually match it, but don't capture the group itself. So we should be able to see, if we take this out and hover over, you see group number one is ABC. We get group number one is ABC over and over again because we only have one group here. But if we put this in here and scroll over, suddenly group is gone. Because even though we have a group here, it is no longer a capturing group because we've specified this syntax. We go back here, for example, specify that this is a non-capturing group. Probably use a good example. Perfect. Oh, test again. Last. Let's exec. Great. We get ACD. So remember, the, the first thing is always the whole match of the entire regex. So that makes sense. But then we only get one group, CD. And that's because we made this a non capturing. Great. Um, some other things that are neat about groups that you can have back references to them. So let's say we want to find all the places where we get an L and then another L. That's what this backslash one means. So backslash one is a reference to the first capturing group in the current regex. It won't work if we make it a non-capturing group. So we need it to be capturing and then we can say backslash one. Don't need this plus anymore. 
So it's matching all cases of a double L. If we want all cases of any double letter, we do that. So this will capture any single word character. And if it gets, and say, also match that again, that same match. So I want to point this out for a sec. This is very different than this. It just matches two letters in a row, which is equivalent to that. This one in particular says match a word, any a word character, sorry, any word character, and then match that same thing again right after it. Um, we could even do something kind of fun like this. Word boundaries. Word plus. Word, sorry. This isn't quite what I expected to do. Probably need these. Okay. So this is saying any word, so any zero or more word characters, and then capture some word character. Zero or more word characters after that, rematch the same word character you just matched, and then zero or more word characters after that. And this is all wrapped inside these these to say inside a single word is what we're matching. So it has to be wrapped inside word break anchors. Um, and then we get any word where we have a double letter. So welcome has two E's, Skinner has two M's, expression has two E's and two S's, so probably double matches. Text has two T's. Um, five, 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 remember that this word thing matches digits as well. If we wanted to just make it alphanumerics, we could say uh, A to Z. Excuse me. Did I manage to get them all out of there? There we go. Now we don't match 555. Five, five. Should match still any capital ones. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so that's capturing groups, back references in JavaScript. And most regex, you can also do what's called a positive or negative look ahead, which is a lot like these anchors in a way in that it doesn't end up in the match. Um, so for example, if we want to find an A that is followed by a B, we do this. And notice that we don't also get the B. That's what the look ahead is saying here. It's very different than just doing A, B. We get A and B together in the match for all of these. If we do this though, Suddenly we just get an A, as long as it is followed by a B. Um, we can specify more characters in there, so like A followed by BL. That only matches this one. We can also specify any A not followed by BL. What I've done is I've replaced the equals with an exclamation point, and I've done a negative look ahead. So now we get all the other A's, all the other lowercase A's. Let's make it a, uh, do you have any uppercase A's? A few. Let's make it Case insensitive. Perfect. All right, that's that's really most of it. I think the big thing left to go over is the uh, multi-line flag, and then probably time for some questions if there are any. Who knows? People seem to be okay. If anybody's still listening, um, let's get multi-line in here. Multi-line gives a a different meaning to these anchors. These two anchors now, instead of specifying the beginning and end of the string, they specify the beginning and ending of every line. So we can say this now. Uh, we need something. Match. Okay. Match just the first word character at the beginning of every line. Let's turn off the multi-line flag, and watch how this changes. So notice we, we match it every time there's a line break and a word. We turn off the multi-line. We just match the first word, because this character means the beginning of the whole string, unless we have the multi-line flag on. Then it means the beginning of any given line. Similarly, this has changed. The dollar sign has now changed to mean the end of any given line. Oh, that's fun. 
doesn't match that. Here, let's just for fun, let's match anything. Cool. Oh, you know what's really important that I haven't talked about? Just the dot. Dot is a very simple thing. Yeah, let's, let's take a second to talk about dot. Dot. If you look here, we see dot matching, well, what looks like everything. But in fact, it doesn't match everything. It matches everything. Let's turn off the multi-line flag, which we don't need anymore. It matches everything but the new line character. So you can see that if we do this, we match everything including the new line character. I guess it doesn't, I guess it is not obvious. Maybe if I do dot e, yeah, here we go, dot e, anything followed by e, or anything that's not a new line followed by e. If we change this to white space or non-white space, which is to say everything, um, you can do that with any of the other special characters, by the way, word or not word, digit or not digit, which is to say all possible things, um, followed by an e, we'll see we capture the line break with that E, where the dot did not. Um, neat, neat, that's, that's about regex for you. And, and to reiterate, the, um, it's not critical that you absorb everything I just went over, but hopefully by now you have a sense of what regex is and how you can use it. If you want to go over some practical examples, there are lots of places. We're gonna open up our workshop, and I'm also gonna direct you to the Regex 1 tutorial, which I have found to be especially good. Um, this Regexer is a nice site, has its own uh, examples and reference and cheat sheet. So yeah, you'll have a, you'll have a a lot of chances to try it on your own in just a second. Let's, huh. There's two gotchas I want to mention. They're not super important, but they're good to remember. Um, one I already stated, but I will restate that you can't do recursion or looping in a regex. Um, for example, if you wanted to match a palindrome, you couldn't because you need to loop to be able to do that. What are their best methods, again, to use with regex, i.e. match test? The best methods. I'm not sure what the best method would, means exactly, but the different methods you've got are string.matchRegex, regex.exec string. These should be equivalent ways of doing the same thing based on whether you do string. Dot or regex. Dot. And I think there is, um, I forget what the S one, but for R, it's R.test S. We get true or false back. Remember what you do for a string to test a regex on it. It might also just be match and converting it to a Boolean afterwards. Why don't I get back to you? Is there another question? Can you use regex in MongoDB queries? Huh, that's a great question. Um, you know, I've never tried, but I, I'm i sure you could regex the result of a query, because then you have it strictly in JavaScript. But I can't remember whether Mongo itself supports regex. We could probably find out by looking that up pretty quickly. Does Mongo support regex. Oh, look at that, dollar sign regex in MongoDB. Neat. So the answer is yes. Yes, you can. Um, palindromes. And another, ooh, another, another gotcha about regex in JavaScript, we went over positive and negative look ahead. And in other languages that implement regex, there's often a positive, positive and negative look behind, which is to say match something before something else, but don't include it in the ultimate capture. But JavaScript doesn't have that. Um, cool. I'll field some more questions now, if there are any. There may or may not be. And this viewing, was... anyways. 18 viewers. We're hopping. This here was a string. Oh, it's string not match? Is it also? Oh, so you can use match for strings or match for regex. Okay. 
but there's no like test equivalent. Probably not. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, so this has been this has been interesting. Just been talking to my screen as far as I can tell. Pretty strange experience. This is an obscure time. I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you guys my little cheat sheet I wrote up beforehand for you all. This is just a reminder of all the special syntax and the flags. You can find all sorts of these kind of cheat sheets everywhere. So if you don't become particularly attached to mine, I will not be upset. I will slack this out now. Well, a minute from now, according to your time, probably. Or a minute ago? I don't know. I can, I can never get my time space continuum right. A wormhole did weird things. It's my brain. The juniors. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, David. You're my biggest fan. So I'll take a few, for a few more minutes. We're going to be on Slack. There will be questions. Um, and we will open the workshop to you. And I'm going to share this site, regex1. Ultimately, if you've seen regex before, you may know a lot of this. And that's fine. This is not, this is not a mandatory thing if you feel comfortable in your regex knowledge already. But I would say that if you feel either uncomfortable or you need a refresher, um, this is a very solid tutorial to go through. Notice that it doesn't just have the interactive tutorial, which is nice. It also has these practical examples you can do. Um, so the interactive tutorial is just getting you up, up to speed with sort of what we already went over, but it allows you to do it, um, allows you to have some tests down here that you try to match. One, two, three, so digits. It says, oh great, we just matched a bunch of digits. The practical examples, though, are more things that you're likely to encounter, like matching emails, phone numbers, um, and it's pretty fun. Well, it's fun for me. Slackbot says fascinating. <laughs> Thanks, Slackbot. Anything to add? Yeah. That is about it. I'm going to give it two minutes before I fully end the broadcast on the Hangout um, to give people some time to maybe ask questions, because I'm not sure how long the delay is. So you can enjoy your minutes of silence, or you can choose not to enjoy them if you're that kind of person. Oh, man, this is so weird. Teaching this thing? Yeah. I wish the other one works, because that one would have been popular with this one. Yeah, but also, I mean, uh, Pauses in a normal classroom feel okay. Mm -hmm. Pauses when I'm just talking to my screen feel really, really long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I bet they can still hear us. I hope you guys can still hear us talking meta about the lecture itself. Um, have there been any questions? Facile, some smiley faces, all good things. This is probably unnecessary having the Slack channel itself open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
we need a band, right? We need like musical accompaniment for these kinds of occasions. Yeah. Something at least. Yeah, why don't you um, have your project be creating a band? It's not very tech related, but I would find it useful. You can just form a band for full stack. Cut out delays and pauses. Uh, probably not. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Any seniors out there? Well, if there are, they have ask any questions. Yeah, you'll be able to watch it again. You'll just have to fast forward. Um, yeah, we'll we'll tell you. YouTube. Yeah, we'll tell you what time to enter and what, so that you don't have to just listen to Scott and I type and figure out whether anybody was even there for ten minutes. You have something to say? No, he doesn't. Could you slack out that we are going to stop the broadcast now? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to stop the broadcast now. Any any questions you have, just slack us, um, and we will deal with it on a one to one basis, or we might answer you on the Slack channel. The workshop, Chuck, is regex one. Yes, but we are also going to open our own regex workshop. Um, both of them are optional, um, and they have different things to offer. So I would say if you feel like you want to do, if you want to get comfortable with regex, you might as well do both. All right. Live from New York. This is Omri. This is what my captain, Omri Bernstein, <laughs> the Obama Time Capsule Project, signing off. Thank you for rescuing me. <laughs>